Hi, welcome to another VectorMade tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about transparent backgrounds. I'll be in Photoshop and in Illustrator talking about briefly how you make a transparent background and then um, how to save your files to make sure that they stay transparent um, for your different applications. So, say you want just this bucket and you don't want the black background. Um, you could select this back, this black here, and and then reverse your selection to have only the the bucket selected. And I would recommend doing it that way because the bucket has white to gray, and so if I click here, I'm only going to get a certain percentage of the whites and grays here. But I could always change that up here on the tolerance. But this black is exactly identical everywhere. So I think with a tin tolerance, if I just click on the black. I'm going to get all the black. And then come in here and grab these little handle pieces. And that should do it right there. So I have all the black selected. I'm going to hit Control Shift I, uh, which just inverts the selection. So if I click that a couple times, you'll see the black is selected. Click. And the now the bucket is selected. I hit it twice. Um, and so anyway, if I hit uh, Control J with the uh, bucket selected, I will create a new layer, as you can see right here, new layer out of that selection. If I hide this one, just the bucket. Now, if you wanted to get really fine with the details, you know, I'll back up a step here. You could um, hit Control Alt R, and that will bring up the refine tool that will um, refine your selection for you. Um, Sometimes I'll come in here and, and mess with the feathering. I might do you know, five. Oh, that's too much. You can see if I if I hit, um, let's say 50, you'll see it feather a ton. So maybe I do one or two. One's pretty good. And then sometimes I mess with the contrast, maybe 25, 15, 10%. Sometimes you want to shift the edge inward by just a little bit, maybe minus 10, 25%. These are pretty common. Uh, settings that I use on a lot of images. You don't have to use those. You can use a little bit of radius sometimes if there's hair or something like that. Um, but that's that's pretty standard for me to do something like that. So if I hit OK and then hit Control J again, I'm going to create another selection. But this time maybe a little bit finer and fuzzier on the edge, which makes it not look quite as cut out from certain distances. Maybe makes it look a little more natural. Uh, I think this is a little bit fuzzy, but just to show you the differences in how you can pull an image out, um, I did one. So Anyway, now we've got that. It's transparent. Yay, yay, yay. Uh, I'll go ahead and delete this other background image, the original. Now if I save this as a PSD file, um, I come in here, Photoshop file, 5-gallon. That is going to keep the transparent background, but a lot of clients or other people you might send this to, uh, or even the programs you want to use for your final may not be able to use a Photoshop file. Um, Word or PowerPoint, for instance, they can't use that. So with the most likely um, file type that you will use for transparency is going to be a PNG. So you could do uh, an export, um, export as, um, and then pull this up real quick and change the format to uh, PNG. And this is ticked right here for transparency. Um, you can also mess with the scale, the width, whatever. Um, but this, and then this could give you some different scalings over here. If you want to add like a one-time scale, you want to go here and click and add a half scale, or maybe do another one that's three times as big. So then you could export those all at the same time. It's pretty handy. But if you export that as a PNG file, it should, um, in most programs, import with the transparent background intact. Um, same thing for Illustrator. With Illustrator, though, you have this artboard. So this is this white area is my artboard. And the area back here is is not what will uh, not considered artboard. Um, it's possible artboard area I could use up to like 227 inches. I forget what it is, something like that. Um, so for a file like this, this is a file I vectorized. I originally had this file, which is raster and 
you can see the pixels, right? And then brought it in and changed the color to CMYK and, and everything is vector art. So you can see the lines and vector shapes. Um, so when you save something like this, it's not going to save this white background unless you save it as a JPEG. Because if you save a file as a JPEG, it just takes whatever your artboard is and turns anything that's transparent to white. Um, so how can I tell if this is transparent or not inside of Illustrator? Well, you just hit uh, Control, Shift, and D, and that pulls up your transparency grid. Also can go under View and <coughs> Hide Transparency Grid right here, but it would normally say Show, Show Transparency Grid. See, Control, Shift, D, much faster and can cause you to have a seizure. Uh, so can these checkered squares if you move fast enough. It's just kind of crazy. Anyway, uh, so this is transparent. And there are a couple different uh, file types you could use here. Uh, because it's vector, um, I think the best thing is to save it as either an EPS file or a, PN, uh, a PDF. PDF files can be used by a lot of different programs and can be seen by most people because they have Adobe Reader. Um, EPS, maybe that's more for like print shops and places that have CorelDRAW versus Adobe Suite. Um, the other thing you can do is you can always do the same thing and um, save as, which let's do that here, um, export. You can either do export for screens or export as. I like export for screens because that brings up those options again where you can do different formats all at once. Um, but if you did a, so you could do a PDF and then you could do a PNG and you could do a JPEG as well. So let me just find a decent spot to set these. I'll put them on the desktop real quick and just say export. So I'm doing a PDF, a PNG and a JPEG. And I'll just minimize this stuff real quick, man. Um, Here's the artboard that we did. That's a PDF. Inside the PDF, this is going to appear as white, but the fi in the file itself, this is transparent, okay? Um, and I had a lot of stuff open there. That's closing. Good grief. <laughs> um, let's look at the JPEG. And I have those set to open up in Photoshop, so this will pull up Photoshop. In Photoshop, it will show you if there's transparency or not. So in Adobe Reader, it won't show you. It'll just portray it as white. In Photoshop, you'll actually see if it's transparent or not. As we can see, this is white because it's a JPEG. Um, and then this is the other file here, uh, the PNG file, which I will open with Photoshop as well so that you can see the difference. See? Transparency right here. There's your grid. JPEG, white, PNG, transparent. So... Uh, export for screens, that is a time saver. And if you use PNG for most things and just size it up to the size it's going to need to be um, at the resolution someone needs to have it at, uh, then that will probably fix most of your issues for transparency. Thanks, guys.